Hello. Hello, good morning, good day, good evening to you. This is a medical cannabis show, it talks about news and research related to medical cannabis and supports legal activities. There will be no help with any illegal activities or anything of the like or any things that's going to support wrong, unlawful procedures. I like to stay legal and help as many people as possible as long as they're legal too. So welcome. And today is the talk about Kenna Health, an endocannabinoid system, studies and research, and anti-cancer cannabinoid genes. So there's quite a few things that's going to be related just to the healthy side of it today. Why is medical cannabis useful? Or how can it be useful? And we'll run through quite a lot of slides and some research studies that show the conclusions and the results to them and go from there. So welcome, Ozzy Grosho. How are you? G'day, Monty. How's it going? All right, I'll get into sharing the slides. Better press share first, hey? <laughs> All right. This is actually, I can put this up right now. This is pretty cool. Just a little introduction thing, just from 10 health benefits. I'm gonna show you why this is true. Why it relieves pain, increases lung function, fights cancer, reduces nausea, is good for the gut, it helps protect the brain, is good for sleep and reduced pain, reduces pain, preserves healthy eyes, Okay, I'm not going to prove that one, but that's what it says. And Alzheimer's, it slows up Alzheimer's. Yes, I think there's a study in here on Alzheimer's too, and a few other cool ones, diabetes, and alleviates inflammation. Oh, yeah. Um, back to it. How do I exit full screen? Show chat. Okay, g'day, Kemet. There you go, Kemet. Not Kermit, it's Kemet. <laughs> All right, so that was today's. And now I'll show you and start full of slides and stuff. Try screen. Allow. This is what I'm going to go through today, these things. So first a bit of new stuff. All right, start with a positive note. Cannabis is not an entrance drug. It is an exit drug from pharmaceuticals and narcotics. From Dr. Uma Dana Balam. And that's true. Medical cannabis can work if you use it to your advantage. And here's some news this week. Czechoslovakia report plans to legalise cannabis next year, according with Germany. Well done, Czechoslovakia's government. And New Zealand, medical cannabis reaches Germany for the first time. Isn't that good? Their government's allowed them to produce so much medical cannabis they can export it now. The Australian government, they make things so difficult, charge so much in taxes that the firms here are going into liquidation. Uh, the pilot project in Switzerland is to import cannabis from Canada. Yes, well done. All these governments helping each other. Australia, pull your finger out. And Romania. The parliament debates medical cannabis reform in Romania. Well done. All these, just everyone's going to be so kind of healthy soon. <laughs> and this is a good breakdown of the stems, the seeds and the leaves, what the nutrient content is in them. So there's not much fat in the stems, but in the seeds it's 30%. And in some parts of the leaves, this is the green leaves we're talking about, there's 20%. The fibre, quite a fair bit in it. So a quarter of its fibre, 25% across the range, you could nearly say. And proteins, a lot of, have a lot of protein in it, 20%. So those people with protein shakes and those bodybuilders, yeah, look at that. Pretty good. And the ash, the potash, is low, which you'd expect it to be low. And the phytocannabinoids, the THC and the CBD content of the stems is 0.05. I think I've done it at 0.02. And the CBD, okay, well, that would vary. Oh, wow, really? The CBD stems has that much in it? I've only tested the THC. Interesting. That's very interesting. 2% is actually a notable amount. Um, the seeds, 
well, there's no THC supposed to be in seeds or CBD because their pathways don't exist. Maybe that's from the outside of it that they might have touched because look how low that is. I'd say that's trace elements on the outside because they're not inside. And the leaves, we get, you don't know that you get some on some leaves bigger than the others, CBG too. So that's pretty cool. Good health, kind of health. And if you think this is safe on the left and this is dangerous on the right, you're a part of the problem because every 19 minutes somebody dies from prescription drug overdose. So that's why medical cannabis reform is the future and that's why it's big pharmaceutical people don't want it to come in because they don't know how to make much money off it. They haven't adopted and bought many companies yet and gone into that thing. So it's all about money for them. So that's why, unfortunately, we're in this situation. And I like this one. This is shows a little plant. This is my depression medication, anxiety medication, pain medication, and everything medication. Cannabis, medical cannabis is an all is all I need. Well, it's not all you really need, but it's a really good health. And I can vouch for this. It's really so advantageous. I smoke two and a half pounds a year for 30 years. So I've it really, really helps me a lot. Well, that's today's stuff. Uh, and this is all this. Good health for brekkie. Wake up each day. You got your eggs and your nuts. Good health. What does this say? Eighty percent of opioid users stopped or dropped opioid doses after trying medical cannabis studies. The study showed. Uh, this is a pain chart. So this is the benefits of showing the difference in relation to the THC CBD on the left to all the other different types of pain medications that are around. And on the right is the colors represent the pain relief, which is blue, quality of life, which is yellow. And then there's all different ones down there. I'm going to only talk about the blue and the yellow. So the pain relief at the top, it shows different variants of pain relief. That's fair enough. But it's the quality of life which is more important because you want the mixture of the both. Quality of life, look at this, THC, CBD, massive. For all everything else, THC, and then we go into the um, benzos, and look at that, really low. Ibuprofen, of course, is the lowest. But we already knew this, but this is a, an overall benefit of using medical cannabis. Here's a study done, I should be checking... Uh, I'll go back to that page and then I'm going to check chat. Why, how can I do that? I'll leave this on the screen and I should have my tablet going today. It should be telling you the chat. It is good. So I can go back and see what's going on. All right, sweet. G'day, Ozzy, Monty, Kermit, Jeff Papaya, Sunshine, Ozzy Autos. How's it going? Nick S. How's it going, young fella? Who else is there? Lene. Good to see you, Lene. Kermit, I thought Canada imported from Jamaica. Uh, yeah, but I'm talking about legal stuff, mate. <laughs> Fairgro, how you going, Fairgro? Thanks, Fairgro. Uh, Aussie Autos, can we talk later on indoor plants fading out and how, in this case, is yellow is normal? Some people still have a lot to learn, it seems. They sure do, mate. They sure do. Well said, Aussie Autos. Uh, if there's time, mate, yes, please remind me. And if there's not time, definitely I'd love to go over that next week for another talk for sure. There you go. Making it tea. That's the way. Good health to you, Fairgro. Monty, Aussie Autos. Talking about just going through the chat here. Just trying to keep up. Nearly caught up. Aussie Auto's burnt tips. The plant has a bit of too much nutrients. Yes, it does. Well said, Aussie Auto's. Disgusting, but never occurred in the world naturally. Eaves of Jade. Hello, Eaves of Jade. Aussie, it's yellow. That's it. That's it. He's caught up. Let's get back to it. All right, here's a study in the, what's this to do? Cannabinoid therapeutics in orifacial in the dental pain management. This is an Australian study that was done in 2022, Australian Dental Journal. 
that. Where is it in here? Of the five articles included, one reported a sufficient effect. Uh, all studies that analyze cannabis products and pain management and conditions in the present and the general spectacular dentals were included. Of these five articles, one reported significant effects in disordering pain relief using a topical cannabinoid formulation compared to a placebo. Four articles reported no significant effects of cannabinoids for pain relief. So I'm going to prove there's a few studies here from Australia and there's a few from overseas. You're going to make your own decision on how well the Australian studies are done for what their outcomes are. So this is showing one of the five worked or didn't because the all that they tested was THC and CBD only. That's it. We'll go on. It's it, my point. The conclusion is going to be, I'll tell you already, that Australia, they just don't do it properly enough. They don't do it in depth and they rule out conclusions and they think and people go, oh, this study was done by the Australian Dental Journal and it, and it concluded it doesn't work. So they go off that information. Mate, they're not doing it properly. And you'll go in, you'll see later from the other studies how well in depth they're done and to their different conclusions. I'm not here to, I'm just here to help educate and to show people what's happening, really. Overseas has got a lot more, they've done it for longer. And anyway, I'm just getting into it. Here's an anti cancer molecular pathway. Actually, I think I should show some. I'll go through some of this stuff first. So the cannabinoids, they inhibit cell prog progression by activating the receptors. Uh, I'll go to the next ones, actually. Here's that. So this line up here, this is the cell wall. These are the receptors in the cell wall. These are the molecules coming up to the receptors, and they're doing their different processes from that. So your CBD and THC, they'll come in here through the CB1 and they'll activate these different receptors down here. They'll turn ones on and, and turn ones off. They'll be agonist and antagonist. So, and then they'll come down to the bottom. They'll either kill cells, apoptosis is killing cells, or they'll arrest them. They'll pull them up in cell cycle so they can't complete their different various stages of cell cycle. Or they'll go into autophagy, which is eating their own cells. So this is a pathway showing the different molecules going through the receptors which activate different genes to give this outcome. And it works. So I'm not going to go into all of the, how it works with different things. You can see all the different lines, how it pluses and it all ends up. There's not many halts and those halts are really pathways that are helping other ones to perform their tasks. This is a cancer study with cannabinoids. I have a lot of attention here. Yeah, the studies investigating the different mixtures. Uh, trying to read it for this suppressed. What I found interesting that there's nowhere in the study. Oh, there's a mixture. I had to look up. Oh, the amounts. So they're not saying the amounts in general. So there was a study done without the amounts. So this isn't. A, a, this person wasn't real satisfied with the result because they had to look it up. But still, there is a conclusion, and it's to say that this, the red, it's a calcium receptor, that the higher in cannabinoid mixture increases the amount of uh, resistance to the cannabis pathways. That's what this one was going on about. Um, yeah, here, see in here, suppress the mitigation of the CA9-22 cells, supporting its anti-cancer potential. So that's what this red one is over here, CA9-22. So it's the higher dosage. Improved that. And I've had persons, I've had two people who have had cancer and they've successfully had it held by using the RSO, which is the, can, the mixture of your CBD, THC and terpenes into one. And that's sort of held it as stationary. There'll be other studies to prove that as well. Here's this Australian study that was done. They found what's the best way. They took 1,400 respondents in Australia and said, what's the best way that they consume? Not, no, not the best. How do they consume their cannabis? So 1,400 people were among this test. 
and the fact is many are smoking it 25 percent, but actually would prefer something else well i don't know about that my circle of friends always um goes to smoking or vaporizing and it's either through these methods up the top so yes edibles and stuff of people who have probably lung problems or who want it to last a bit longer or maybe can't consume it where they're they're at edibles very and topicals really really good yeah, there's a study from australia this was amazing this is a boy who had suffered who has had in the past yeah had a hun i know a thousand epileptic fits a month is seizure free now because of medical cannabis see he had a thousand a month let's break that down so that's that 30 a day that's one every living hour so and he's been and it says here he's been pain free for three years three years now three. yeah i love it i mean i got that up see uh 30 percent of children with a life limiting cancer are using some form of cannabis in the uk now brilliant medical cannabis for all yay i'll catch on the chat uh looks like monty and aussie's just going back at it yep if you've got any questions guys try and put the question mark and if i don't see it try and post it again and i'll try and get back to it because i'm just skimming down for the questions like Oz, uh, monty what uh -oh. <laughs> all right this one can cb1 receptor antagonist treat diabetes so they're talking about thc activating your cb1 receptor and will it work with treating diabetes ah so it's the study suggests that cb1 receptors in, inhibit can increase insulin sensitivity which reduces the chance of type 2 diabetes the genes that code the cb1 receptor are associated with type 2 diabetes so it's really cool and also you get a bonus because the cb1 receptor inhibits anti-inflammatory products agents and this means that bringing up insulin sensitivity by knocking down cb1 receptor uncoordinately allows il-1b to go unchecked and lead for harmful inflammation conditions what do you think of pharmaceutical industries creating failed synthetics with novel effects of inversely target the endocannabinoid system? Three states now have banned synthetic cannabinoids in US of mighty A. This is a pathway chart just to show how it works down here, how it unlocks these two. So THC, CB1 receptor is down here and it has both these pathways, it works with diabetes as well uh, this is a pathways of CBD and the endocannabinoid system so there's your cell wall with all the receptors on it so CBD it works with 5-HT which is a serotonin receptor and your TRPV1. Remember how to reset, um, remember that? Total Real Pain, version one. And it blocks calcium channels. And it's, this is your dopamine channels. So it can stimulate dopamine with D2 receptor. It'll block the GPR55, which is to do with your receptor from your THC. Your MOR is your uh, opium receptor. And it blocks that as well, or it's, it, it has a negative allosteric modulating effect to be correct your cb1 and cb2s are your thc which opens um and is engaged engaged in those receptors and it has an antagonist effect which means it works supposed to work against it. it it holds the receptors like it can come in there and holds receptor so it's not as effective for thc when cbd is involved that's what this is sharps showing uh cbd also works with a nucleus in your ppay tparv gene and that's to do with your insulate modulum um to do with diabetes 
It's and calcium channels in your mitochondria are very good. And this is um, topicals. Works fantastically well. Because remember, our largest organ in our body is our skin. So this is extremely effective. So this is one version of, you can get it. This is a CBG, CBD joint and muscle cream, which only has CBD isolate, arnica, camphor, and peppermint in it. And it has 1,000 milligrams or 2% CBD. That's pretty blooming strong. Oh, that's probably for the whole thing. That's not for the dose you get. Still very effective and useful. CBD gummies are also great for those people who can't induce it, who can't smoke it. So 25 milligrams per gummy. Without vegan, gluten-free, THC-free. Yes, that's what they're supposed to be. People make them properly. This is a cool sign. Forget the cranberry juice. Just bring the cannabis, medical cannabis. That's right, because it alleviates menstrual cramps. There's actually a study here later on on menstrual pain for how females do it. Headline, gummies dominate cannabis-infused edible sector. The sales of cannabis-infused edibles nearly tripled from 2018 to 2022. Uh, actually, I'm going to share something else first. This study. This is a amazing study done to diversity of molecular targets from CBD pathways, their signaling pathways. And I love signaling. That's to do with controlling stuff. It's how things work. So if we can control, turn things on and off, we can control things. So these different receptors that can turn it off, we can manipulate them to work in our advantage. So this is a massive study. Uh, CBD is the second most abundant component in the cannabis plant, second to THC. I don't know how to start with this. This is really big. This is a great read for anybody. Um, it's just, I'm just going to cruise down here. So the cannabidol, cannab, cannabidol, cannab, see the first word over here? Cannabidiol, that's CBD. So CBD targets several receptors, and this is going to show the abbreviations for the different types of receptors. This is the best uh, explanation I've ever seen. So I'm just going to prove down and slow, really go down for years. So CB1, CB2, the THC. Actually, I'm going to go a bit faster than that. The GPR55 are the G proteins. TPRVs, ones and twos, are very good. Introduction, right? We don't want a history of it. We all know about the history, how it's very good. It comes down to ah, this chart. And this is the, that's the chart I explained before. QB. <laughs> explained it <clears throat> okay sweet next system so how these interact within our system so the initial studies examined the pathways and reported that these receptor systems were found and different receptors the how they worked within each other it is important to note I'm just going to this is important to note in addition I'll, I'll go slowly so people want to pause it later on because this is really, really rad study. And this table is the overview of the CBD molecular targets. So it's got their different receptors, their effects that they have if they stimulate it or if they turn it off or if they have a negative effect or if they have some sort of other effect. And then it's got their results. So what they do, if they decrease it, if they increase it, it's just fantastic. I could nearly do a probably a show on this one study it's really really well i couldn't believe i just wrote i think i wrote it a couple of times it's just fascinating it's all the questions i've ever wanted are sort of been answered in this study it was brilliant the dopamine d2 receptors then your mor receptors which is your I've already explained those ones tprv sodiums yeah your ppary receptors which is your modulin ones to do with your 
glucose and stuff like that. Uh, and then here it goes to explain in detail what each of those receptors do and how they interact with our bodies. And it's just brilliant, mate. It's I love getting good in-depth studies like this. This is like look. It says to uh, it showed powerful tool to manage some Parkinson's disease symptoms through the GPR55 receptor, which is unlocked through THC. THC binds to that receptor, and then that signals to unlock it. The HYT is also a, it's a serotonin receptor, and it's triggered from CBD as well. And I've still got a lot more to go. Uh, sorry for skimming over it, but I just got it. I should have made the, uh, maybe I can retouch on this one. Then it's into your dopamine receptors and what they do, how CBD interacts with that and what levels that you can use to trigger the dopamine receptors, how effective this medical cannabis is, your adn adenosine receptors, which is that one I was just about to get to. Here you go. So CBD alongside with THC was shown to inhibit the adenine's reuptake, meaning, you yeah, say, so what the hell does that bloody mean? Significantly reduces tumor necrosis factor. Oh, you want well, you want tumors to die, reduces the factors, reduces it, the pathways. Uh, it, was, it was blocked. Indifference concept was shown to have anti arithmetic effects induced in rats. It was blocked. The CBD might activate more than one type of adenosine receptor. That's this is the pathway here and it's shown that it was first thought up, up top so an andamide brother and sister in the endocannabinoid system so it was back in 92 it was formed just to go down here and it had double bonds that's what they thought and they thought it did link up with the immune sensitive receptors down here but now the latest research has shown that it has no double bonds and it goes through these channels and it is definitely linked up through the Y channel, not just the A. Back to the study. So there's the adenosine receptors and the MOR receptors. Yes, it has the cannabinoids might have modular effect of the opioid receptors was initially postulated and it was found to be true that THC increased the effects with the dissociation markings by a factor of 12. Uh, to conclude that, however, we exposed parallel, they found that significantly reduced gene expression. To conclude that CBD reduced the reinforcing properties, motivation, and relapse for ethanol. Oh, okay, so that's to do with alcohol. So it's suggested in this study that CBD helps through the MOR gene for alcoholics to get off alcohol. So if you're an alcoholic and want to get off alcohol, CBD might be a answer for your genetic makeup. That's what that study proves. It has a close interaction between cannabinoids and the opiate systems. It's analoxic properties and lack of psychostimulant effects. CBD could be a powerful tool to be used in drug abuse treatments and withdrawal symptoms. The ion channels, yes, it works with your TPRV, which is unlocked from the CBD. In addition to CBD is also shown to engage in the calcium ion channels, very good. Here's your PPAR receptors, which is intimidatingly is related to glucose metabolism and insulin signaling in skeletal muscle and liver so that's that PPAR gene that was engaged before from CBD helping with type 2 diabetes and obesity the conclusion the conclusion that it works with it, it's a wide range of pharmaceutical activities underlies it's 
its effects such as anxiety, depression, pain, memory, metabolism, and more. One potential novel effect of the GPRC heterons is a macromolecular complex. Com okay. Um, while it's important to recognize the benefits of effects, it is even more important to understand that it is not a miraculous drug, yes, that can be effectively used and given in any condition. While it seems like it might be, it's not. The pharma, they have different properties in there. So CBD might work, but you've got to have CBD isn't just given on its own. CBD is given with other things. So it's, it has advantages of administration substances. Yes, harm reduction. For sure, it works really well with getting off things. The total more effects with chronic treatment. CBD is also, if you have too much THC in your system, you can use it to uh, CBDs, counters that as well. Brilliant study. Isn't that a brilliant study? That study again is through the National Library of Medicine and it was 2020 in December called Diversity of Molecular Targets and Signaling Pathways for CBD. Well done. CBD and CBN for sleep is a study that's been done. If you want to get involved and you live in the United States of the Yankee Americas, um, you can participate. This might be finishing. It's supposed to finish at the end of November, so you'd have to really get on to this. So they just want to find out what the effects were with CBD, CBN on sleep. So if you have sleep problems and take these things, you can participate. So they reckon they'll even help you out after the study for your efforts. So you've got to be 21 and living in the States. So, and anybody with self-reported sleep disturbances, and you've got to have a smartphone or one of those wearable sleep trackers. And that's it. Click to see if you participate. So it's science helps everybody. This is, here's the website. CBD up top here, hopefully you can see that. cbd-sleep-study.peoplescience.health forward slash cbd slash sleep slash study. Here's another test, a study from, oh, the Australian News. Cannabis oil failed to improve pain or quality of life in palliative care patients. Yeah, see, I don't even have to blim and say anything, do I? So let's go down here and they did it. Look at their tests. Oh, yeah. So to draw this conclusion to get into the Australian news headlines, mind you, this is tw three days ago. It made national headlines. This study was done with 144 patients. Now, for them to do a study, they've got to do a blind. So for their blind, you've got to have half that aren't placebos. Therefore, 70, 70 or 72 patients were tested in this study. They've drawn a conclusion that cannabis oil doesn't improve pain or quality of life. In, it is in palliative care, but the fact is, from me going through all of these other studies that's shown it and then the Australian people, it's just, it's disturbing and really upsetting. It's now people can only believe what they, what the professionals say. For them to go and do a study with 70 people to draw a conclusion that it doesn't work. So now our politicians are going to go, well, the University of, University of Queensland, UQ has gone and done a study and they found it's ineffective. That's what the politicians can say now in Australia. Wow, we anyway. I'm not gonna carry on. I'm very, it's disturbing, it's really upsetting. It's, it's I've proved it all anyway. I'm not, you don't want to mind poignant. Here's a study the cannabinoids and terpenes with anti inflammatory potential. It was done the 22nd of November. It's this highlighted that. Which cannabinoids have a greater potential? The study demonstrated that the THC had an effect on reducing inflammatory biomarkers for the process of three immune cells. That's yeah, that's CB1, CB2, and TPRV version one. It's not version one, D1 through those three. The following THC had the greatest immune activity modulations. So it goes in descending order. So THC was the best, CBDV, CBG. CBC, 
CVN and then CVD had immune activity modulation effects. So some of the minor cannabinoids and terpenes tested had some anti-inflammatory effects as well. So according to the paper, pinene showed the greatest immune modulating effect activity, followed by linalool, linalool is good antispasmodic, phytol, that's a good neuro, um, what's it called? Anyway, and trans neuro lidol, there we go, that one, while lin, limonene appeared to have no effect. Had no effect, okay. So there's a study that at least they tested both together. Oh wow, well, I haven't seen chat for a bit. I need to back up to here. I'll go back to chat and keep this up on the screen. Shivers. So I'm just getting carried away because I love these studies because the studies prove things, but then you see the, how the Australians do the studies and I just shake my boom head, mate. <sighs> Make sure you tune in CC next show when he explains. And all fade to your bro. Yeah, good on you Aussie bro show. Uh, they're cannibalizing themselves. Good smoke, my leaf. Uh, yeah, leaf smoke's great. I smoke trim, mate. Nothing wrong with trim. AA, you attack me person. Oh, gosh. All right. I hope there's no drama going on. Okay, there is a bit. Um, are you serious? All right. I'm just looking for questions related to this medical cannabis one. Uh, yo, Zia. Did you see that? All right. I didn't qualify for that study. Oh, what? Ripped off. It would have been good too. It's a good study. Sad, isn't it? Yes, it was yesterday. Critter, how you going? Wonder who funded that study. They, they're funded by, by um, different external bodies, like different various, say, agricultural producers or pharmaceutical suppliers or bodies like that or government grants they got sections in that different amounts so they're funded by different things like that Monty and you'll find too it's a good question too because you, you do that's a good source to always ask that because some of the studies like the one I said a few weeks ago funded by the nutrient company where they said nutrient retention in the plants was fine with their chemicals that they use you don't have to flush so that was you do have to check the sources because they're very biased some of them not done with science backgrounds. Um, nearly at the end here, Monty. The Israel studies alone prove THC can help with immune disorders. Good on you, mate. Yes, that's right. Israel is fantastic. They've been working for so many, so many years with medical cannabis, CBD particularly. They're doing some good stuff. So the endocannabinoid system. There are two endocannabinoid receptors. There's much more than that. There are two. Okay, cannabis plants contain phytocannabinoids that, yeah, we've just been through all that sort of stuff. There's evidence that full extracts are the best because of their entourage effect. Well, yeah, well, okay, they can, it depends on the genetic makeup of the person because if they take a full, full effects with something that disagrees with their genetic makeup, it's not good for them. So it's, it's hard because there's so many different compounds that are used to an entourage effect. You're sort of having a big mixture. Some inhibit, some um, squash the effects, some work with it. It's very hard that question, that one. So I'm not sure if I agree with that, but they are better than individual cannabinoids. So I always like full spectrum personally. You just gotta find what works with your body. There is evidence for clinical endocannabinoid Defiant syndrome. Yep, we have to inform medical professionals about this great healing potential potency of cannabis plant. Therefore, it is time to think about endocannabinology. Health cannabinoids can be helpful for alleviating various symptoms of autoimmune diseases through holisticcaring.com. Did you know this, the female cycle impacts cannabis tolerance? 
people have been using cannabis for years to alleviate menstrual pain for centuries actually yeah did you know queen victoria used to use it back in the 18 or 1700s for her cramps alleviate for moods headaches and other symptoms so this is directed at, at shields at the girls ladies in society how you can get benefits out of it as well it all comes down to estrogen or maybe some of the the queer types who have a lot of estrogen in their system might also benefit from this cbd dominant products might be a better option yes higher thc levels can exasperate anxiety or other negative symptoms well for caffeine sensitive folk like me if i have sativa i'll be running around the room so i'm going to have high thc indica and my pain specialist didn't even know that back in the day he called in another pain specialist and said oh listen to this and i started telling them some stuff they didn't even know that one thing that basic thing so because i wondered for years why is this not working for me you know different things it's because i was caffeine sensitive and the cultivars i was getting was sensible with sativa now i smoke indica dominant and i'm fine take a break from this thc yeah it's good to take a break it reduces your tolerance and if you don't need it why have it because people just smoke it it's just bong 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 but it's building your tolerance up and so it's yeah i try to wait till my mind's sort of wants yeah i'm feeling a bit sort of straight now i sort of want some need some more that's how i sort of regulate it here's a a study and emerging treatments for common symptoms in older adults so they're finding that cannabis really works with multiple things in adults and this isn't the page that i want but it's must be the study that it comes out of the american geriatric society book from january 2021 volume 69 issue one had a study to do with medical cannabis effective how it is, is so effective with elder people in society and i can tell you when i was in the dispensaries i lived in bc five years in canada five years and i used to ask all the elderly folk when i was in the dispensaries all the time why are you in here and i'd say because we can take these couple of capsules or this topicals or we can take this big handful bag of pharmaceuticals which cost us heaps which give all sorts of side effects and we don't know what's going on that's what the world that's what the big farmer wants to hear because that's how they make money but for the healthy side of things which i'm about it's all about you and getting relief from this magical wonder drug that you can make find to work with you and remember the different terpenes and the different cannabinoids give a different outcome so you have to find what variety of cultivars genotypes really work with you i spent many thousands in the dispensaries in bc just going around buying heaps of strains buying half an ounce this half an ounce I always had to get an amount because to see what worked with me and i put them all through the tests then i found out what worked with me sourced those genetics and now that's what i'm about so i really it works with me quite well Ah, oh, here's uh, five bucks for support. Thank you for that little button down below. And eighty dollars gets you my private lectures. There's about a dozen of them. A hundred and fifty dollar button gets you a twenty dollar twenty minute video call and a novelty gift like a chart or something that I made. And three hundred dollars gets you a weekly video call, and that's more directed at a company or to a patient who's struggling and maybe wants my professional opinion going to their doctors or we're setting up a grow or something along those a legal grow I only work with legal folk uh, this show is all about legal types of activities so thanks for those who do support can a jobs I don't think there's any this week no nope. we've got artwork so this is good for this is an old ancient thing I do like the history of the old school stuff I have to admit this is an ancient thing to do with, with cannabis back in the day I think it's Chinese Actually, look at the letters. In that joint body, that what leader dot what don't need that what. Yes, it's Chinese. So that's saying medical cannabis is wonderful. Everybody should use it, and all will be in good health. Haha, <laughs> very good. Actually, I'll leave that up. No bit of check chat. I'll just go up a bit. Yeah amazing this yes i don't think australian government and israel are on bad terms though no they're not monty but it's just australian law doesn't allow for these types of things to happen so the studies that have been done are so limited 
and the taxes that have been charged are so high that medical cannabis availability in Australia is so low for patients that need it. That's what, uh, I don't trust Israel Labs, Kermit says. It's all still gov. They've got some good studies though, I, Kermit, I do have to say. Not to dis, I'm not saying that they shouldn't be distrusted, but the studies, it's all about the science, not about, see the Australian science, how they've done their studies, which a few I've shown today, and the overseas ones that have done full in-depth studies, long-term ones, with multi with thousands of applicants, not just um, 70. <laughs> I get kind of express, okay. Um, where are you going to show us? You grow CC, nose out. This is a medical cannabis to do with uh, the body today. All about anti cancer and how it really helps with the endocannabinoid system. We can see more research from the doctors. Not indoor. Okay, listen. I'm just trying to skim over here and go down a bit. Fair grow, wait, mucking around. Oh, a few question marks not related to me. What THC you pull? Okay, it's not to do with me. Down to the bottom. Say, uh, sorry, I'm not really listing your reading the chat. Uh, wait, your something. What? Fair grow? Wait, wait, are you playing games or talking about legit cannabis results? I don't think that's result rejected at me because I'm showing a legitimate cannabis results and I think in my studies that I'm showing the sources of them so we choose to play all right I think there's a bit of argument going on all right back to this I'm gonna wrap it up soon too oh this is the last thing what's the difference between medical cannabis and hemp derived cannabis I like that because medical cannabis and hemp derived cannabis what's the difference well hemp has no THC in it so you're not getting those pathways that are going to be opened from THC, but you're still going to get terpene profile. But a lot of this hemp is in sativa. There's some indica version. I've got an indica version, but there's most of it's in sativa. So you're going to get those pinene and related terpenes, I suppose, like that, where medical cannabis has THC and it has been bred for medical purposes. Hemp is only just newly getting into the market when mostly it was derived for fiber at 5%. Now they're getting cultivars up around the 20 and it's, and it's starting to happen. Medical cannabis has been around for generations and it's been worked on and trying to get the best terpene and cannabinoid profile out of it, where hemp's just new at it and it doesn't have THC as well. It's very limiting. Hemp is good though, don't get me wrong, but I think that's what the difference is between medical cannabis and hemp derived cannabis a lot of hemp derived cannabis too it'll be from the they'll say it's from the oil and the oil will be from the seeds the seeds don't have any terpenes in it at all like at all and they don't even have any cbd in it all it has is oil so um yeah it's medical cannabis it should be how that's the source the route i'd be going I'd be very very skeptical about hemp derived people these days they're good at marketing and they will leave things out so you'll think, oh, I'm getting hemp stuff, rad, CBD. Well, some oil is made from seed. The seed has no CBD in it. Do you know you can make uh, from the hemp seed, you can make milk and the milk protein, they get from the protein out of the seeds and it comes out white and it comes out really good. There's no CBD in that. That's a good um, difference. I think I'm done today. I wonder how long this has been going for. for 50 minutes. I am. Rad. Done. And then back to. I can stop sharing the screen. All right. I'll put this on the screen for you to see. If there's any topics, anything you just want to add, I'm going to cruise up on the chat and see what's going on here. All right. There you go. Okay. That was at you, CC. Fair go. See, that was at you. All right, we're going to go up. Fergo said to me, what are you playing games or are you talking about legitimate cannabis results? Don't get me started, Fergo. I try to help people. I'm not going to bloody... And then he goes and says, under it, you're doing a brilliant job. Well, 
well just reinterpret that well this is not and i'm not going to get involved in drama actually it's just ridiculous i'm here to try and help people and um not let the things that bother me bother me <laughs> i just want to show the people that Absolutely love your knowledge, CC, for, a pretty, for the pretty arguments in the chat. I'll stop now. Couldn't care less about the chats, mate. It's got nothing to do with me. If you just want to do it, that's use. I'm just here to help people. Just whack a question mark next to the thing if you want me to answer some questions. Uh, Aussie autos, so true. Respect the community. Yeah, good. Um, okay. Monty, here's a question. Where you had the. Oh, it's not directed at me. Okay. It's a bit hard. All right. I have a question. Monty Grosso says, I meant to say it was not typed at you at Aussie CC. Oh, okay. Jesus, hard to keep up. I can tell you. Exactly. We all need to be helpful. It was a typo. There's Figaro. Good. Baker Perkins. Yes. Good on your Baker. Thanks for the props. Aussie Grow Show. Aussie Gunja Man. Keep doing what you're doing, Aussie CC. We respect your work, man. Thank you for your kind words, guys. I try. Thank you. What's that? Uh, Aussie. Grow, show, support for a month. Thank you. What's it say? Uh, how to determine if your plants are in good health? It didn't come up on StreamYard's thing. How do you determine if your plants are in good health? And you put a $10 one month thing next to it. So I suppose I should answer the question because you pay 10 bucks for that question. Um, how to determine if your plants are in good health? Well, the Bricks meter is a really good start. That's I've done a video on the Bricks meter. That's a, to do with your plant health. Um, you can see if it's in deficiencies or not. It is a good way to read your leaves. If your leaves are in good heaps of chlorophyll all over it with no curling, curving, dipping, twisting, or color patches, you should be all right. Uh, look at the stem to make sure there's no stem cankers to see if there's no little, yeah, the stem should be sweet. Your veins, your intervenal chloristus, you don't want. So you want to make sure your veins of your leaves are actually all looking nice and, I think, yellow. Because um, that's where they, that's their vesicles, their phloem and xylem. So they've got to all be fine. And you make sure there's enough the humidity and the external conditions are right for your plant to be moving forward. And, yeah, so that's a bit of a visual on morphogenic expressions to see if your plant's in good health. I hope that helps answer your question, Aussie Grow Show. Um, all right. CNC, hi, Monty, you're doing great service to us. Thank you for your kind words, Monty. Good on your Kermit. I'm going to call you Kermit. Sounds better. And you're green too. And that symbol should be a frog, not a blooming thing. <laughs> but good on you. Thanks for your kind words too, mate. Uh, 48 hours of darkness before harvest. What's your thoughts? Um, there's been a few tests, Matt, Rob, on that that have shown it to work. Um, there's been a test, say, 24 hours, 48 and 72, and the 48 was better. Two friends still do that. I've done it a few times, and I thought it to improve the, the, the strength or the THC content. Their tests show that it's gone up a couple of notches in THC, um, yeah, good question, mate. I pressed. Okay. Um, should there be, this is wrapping it up, guys. So if there's anything you want to, it's because it's today with health. I'll put the health thing on the screen. Should there be, okay, total. Okay. It's white. When you look. All right, thanks. Oh, yeah, good stuff. Thanks for your answer. It looks like I've answered it sufficiently. Nice to help. Thanks for your help, too. It's just an outline for the rest. Okay. All right, well, 
there's not much to really chat about. The questions are all pretty gone. Definitely appreciate. Thanks for typo. It's come and changed. Yep. Oh, thanks, Vegro. Can't put super chat messages in. Activate your super chat. Well, I don't even know what a super chat is. Anyone know if you can grow beans found in medical? Says Critter. Oh, yes, mate. That's they're feminized. So that's the best way. They're going to be female because they wouldn't have used any males in with their stock. So that there's more than likely the chances that you're just going to get a female from that medical seeds that you get. So definitely, mate, save them for your um, when it's legal soon and get them going. All your medical stuff. For sure store your your seeds in the so once you get them out of your medical cannabis because you've got to wait till it's legal so store them in the fridge in a tupperware container small tupperware container with some rice and we'll put your put your seeds in like a container and then put that in with paper towel so it'll absorb any moisture and then put that little container in a bigger container with rice in it so that absorbs that moisture at the bottom of the back of the fridge and it'll keep them really good um, for a good few years until We've gone legal because I have to say that to support the law. Yes. So that's a great question. Good on your crit up. CSL, how you going, mate? Super chat is where someone donates to ask a question. Oh, really? I hear my voice saying, really? Because I'm so poor. That's, that's a spin out. Okay, well, I'll be looking into that one. Thanks for the suggestion, fellas. I actually got a bean. That's the way. They're not affected by radiation. <laughs> Even better. No, they're not. Well, it depends. If you... That grow might have put them through mould. And if they put them through their mould, because I think in Australia you've got to have a standard radiation UVC chamber on site so if you can get mold it's you're allowed to take it from two percent down to one percent to acceptable something rot like that that's what they're allowed to do here so yeah if you've got your medical cannabis which i've seen some with mold in australia so they might have it yes mate but the chances will be low and that type of radiation hopefully won't have affected your genetics much so it's still that's a very relevant and good question good on your crit up Hope it grows well. Cheers, Fratel. Hey, Fratel. He's a vaping partaker. Vaping's, vaping's very good medicinally. That's the way I ingest my cannabis mostly. Everybody send... Okay. Uh, go with the critter. Ha-ha. Uh, I got two more. Yes. Save, if you do get stuff in medical cannabis, really truly save it in a good way because it'll be valuable down the track. Label it accordingly, put it and save it in those conditions and it should be right. And then worst case scenario, you can tissue culture it down the track uh, when we're legal. I'll go well and truly into that and show you how you can bring back old school genetics through tissue culture processes. It's fun. Um, unlock, get your pollen. If she's someone to see me there, I'll just go, what's this big thing? There you go. Ching. My medical seeds are pop. Okay. <laughs> when you... Yes, actually. I want to do it. Spewing. Exodus. Matt Rob. No, not. None of the one I found never popped. That's because they've... Might have... It's been a late home. If you get seeds that are... They're immature... They're white. They might be yellow. Um, they might be odd shaped and sort of thin inside when you look at it. They won't be real dark. They won't have matured properly. They've been picked, they've been produced in below 25 days because it takes about 25 days for the cycle to go through to produce mature seeds. So possibly we would have had a stress event in late harvest. So they would have had a heat problem at day, um, day 30. It would have induced the male pollen and then that would have put it out and produced immature seeds. So that's what you get your, your yellow or white immature seeds. You can still germinate from that, but it's 
you've got to be that's a tissue culture thing where you've got to try and revive cells that's nothing to do with this germination process which is to do with producing the radical little white little tick that comes out from the bottom of it my medicals yep reading how deep you're putting them for tell okay it's not to do with me i put them straight just with your seeds it takes three things for them to start to germinate they got to have the air they got to have the right conditions for them like the temperature then they're going to have water so put them in water make sure the water's good water and i let them soak on the surface for about two or three days and then most of the time they'll sprout and they'll germinate and you'll get the radical come out and then you can go and do afterwards and if it doesn't sprout that means that its dormant state is high so you have to perform it you might take it out of the water crack it manually crack it and let air and water go in and then put it back into the water or put it under paper towel um, but you shouldn't sink it because I used to sink it and let it go on the bottom that's where you're going to get all the fungal growth because the fungus and bacteria grow 10 times faster than plant cells uh, the microbes and fungi cells grow in hours and minutes and plant cells grow in hours 15 odd 20 to 20 hours so that's the best way I've found oh god which I've got to scroll up now uh, um, just going down and bring it Kent yeah it was a joke it's good to joke around Mick okay well it looks like a bit of action going on I've just got 12 okay save them for tell I've been getting shade from mine hook to the love Aussie I've seen a little I've seen a little vid on GMO seeds the person was saying they're genetically modified one gene making the other 1500 genes unstable your thoughts on that they've genetically modified one gene making the rest unstable no because genes well that one gene doesn't interact with 1500 it might interact if there's codependencies with some genes where they do have needs one gene to be there to be switch on another one or there to switch off another one and stuff like that but it's not going to switch them all off that's definitely scientifically wrong um and the modifying one gene that's when you've got to see what the gene expressions are like when i modify or put genes into plants like my um, elf gene is a classic example the early finishing gene when that goes in that's gone into uh pineapple death bubba and that's works and it tests fine and i can just see cool i've that gene i pulled it out it's definitely in that because at day 48 i've got no more white pistols left they're all amber sweet so i've known that that's been put in and that that gmo or that gene transfer has been successful so um i hope that's answered that question monty what are the the people that's the problem about the cannabis industry is a lot of people they're not educated enough yet to make good um they a lot of people bullshit they just tell like um tilray had their scientists say that they have had scientists put a post out and say that they hang their plants upside down to drain the thc into the tips into the buds and that's a fake thing put out by scientists so it's just rampant everywhere people just um it's the cannabis industry unfortunately is full of it and i'm just trying here to try and make good sense of it so everybody can make their own decision we don't have to go and point fingers and say this and that we can just know our own decision like today with the studies with how everybody should have drawn their conclusions to the australian studies compared to the proper international studies and just seeing the difference is it good to test 70 people and draw a con conclusion that it doesn't work on pain as australia or should we test over a thousand people do massive in-depth year-long studies and then draw conclusions good question monty uh cheers Aussie CC I'm out see us out Matt by genetically modifying one gene you have now made the other 15 unstable that's right see even Monty knew it before I answered it's ridiculous right down the bottom 
and they were talking about a company that's using different GM technique that then went what Monsanto did. Yeah, Monsanto. Um, yeah, education is, yep, yeah, many experts self proclaimed. Yeah, and it's interesting. I'm in, I get all of my stuff here for the show uh, through LinkedIn. So a lot of the stuff comes straight from the source and I try and get the and it's interesting to see the different comments that's underneath some of them it's just fascinating to yeah like that tool they one I said before they must know the profile most of us and all have some change about can't trust yes that's why it's good to once the legal comes legal you can get your own you know it works for you try and work with your genetics use epigenetics and you'll have really good future with your medicines for your cannabis. So that's the outcome. All right. Thanks for every, it's been an hour. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Appreciate you a hell of a lot because without you guys, we wouldn't have any questions. I'd be talking to myself and that would be so boring. So cheers to you. And I'll, oh, hang on. Tell you what next week's going to be. Always love to do that. Actually, you'll love that. Next week is a breeding. It's titled... Genetics, breeding, plant handling, testing, and uh, gene elongation. That's cool. You can muck around with the HY5 gene. It's the gene that elongates, stretches your plant. So that's what big problems. People, they try and use PGRs and all sorts to try and reduce their stretches, but you just manipulate that one gene. So that GM company, tell him to play with that gene. Yes, that would help a lot of people not use PGRs. All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Good on you. See you next week for the breeding and genetics one. Woohoo! That'll be fun. So, good health, good breeding, and good health. No, what is it? The thing I say, sorry about that. Good growing, happy breeding, happy growing, and good health to you. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> good night. Goodbye. Thanks.